Liz Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, April 28th. So today we will see the moon in Sagittarius go void, of course, at 3.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into Capricorn energy at 5.38 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, which is going to be a very welcomed but yet palpable shift. And what I mean from that is that when we're moving out of Sag energy into Capricorn energy, we kind of hit a brick wall. We are flying high in the Sag energy. We are seeing the bigger, broader picture. We are dreaming a bigger dream. We are aligning with the new meaning, new purpose, new truth. Everything is extra. We can thank J Jupiter, who rules over the Sag energy, for that extra wide magnification. However, the Capricorn energy, being an Earth sign, brings us back down to reality. We get a little bit of a reality check, if you will. We can't really fly high anymore. We have to become a little bit more present and start giving the dreams, the goals, the visions that we just recognized while the moon was in Sag a structure, a form. We have to get logical and practical and realize what it is that needs to be done. Again, huge to-do list before we can bring some of these goals, these visions, these dreams to life. So there's a seriousness, a somberness that definitely, you know, has us in a different mood and a different attitude. Everything isn't as light and fluffy, isn't as inspiring, isn't as hopeful and wishful as it was while the moon was in Sag. So again, a little bit of an oomph, a little bit of a reality check being plucked out of flying high and of course thrown down to that earth energy. Now, we also have the last day of Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, being in this Aries energy. So any time that we have a planet nearing the end of a sign of an energy, there's an intensity that comes there. It's almost like we have to reflect back to the lessons that we were supposed to learn. And of course, if you want to go ahead and listen to Venus moving into Aries energy, that whole forecast, that may be a good reminder or refresher on what Venus through Aries was supposed to mean for us. But even more than that, she is anxiously awaiting moving into her rulership in Taurus energy. And so there's going to be an intensity there, an agitation there, lots of heart activations as well. There's going to be a lot of urges, a lot of impulses that we're going to have to kind of squash, if you will, because we're not in the mood, in the attitude, in the time, energy, or space to be acting out on impulse right now, especially where the change of heart is concerned. And so there's going to be an extra layer of intensity on this, you know, moon shift into this Capricorn energy. It is going to ground us out. Again, Capricorn energy is an earth sign. We're in Taurus season, an earth sign. So we're definitely going to have a little bit of a, let's call it grounded approach to some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, some of the impulses, some of the urges that will be triggered and activated due to Venus's time through those last degrees of Aries energy. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so so that you understand where the energy is going to manifest in our physical bodies over this next week with some of these energy shifts taking place. Again, major heart activations with Venus on the move. So with all of that being said, there are 12 different aspects taking place here today. 10 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon, while still in Sag energy, is going to get in the boxing ring, square off, create tension and conflict with Mars. Now, fun fact, Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, is at the final degrees of this Pisces energy. He will be having a pretty important run-in with Neptune here tomorrow before he takes his rulership in Aries energy. So again, there's like an extra layer of closing, of ending a chapter, of really kind of getting in alignment emotionally, intuitively, and spiritually with with a new path, with a new mission, with a new purpose. And so the moon interacting with Mars in this way is definitely going to bring up a lot of agitation, a lot of frustration. Again, we want to move forward, but we're not being permitted to do so as of yet. We're also realizing where it is that the dreams, the goals, the visions that we're now trying to percolate on, trying to actually manifest, where it is that it's going to require some major boldness and bravery and courage on our parts. That will be kicking in when Mars moves into his rulership in Aries energy. However, we are not feeling so happy, so 
happy go lucky so peachy keen so confident about what it is on our to-do list that we're going to have to do in order to initiate this new chapter in order to initiate this new path the moon then interacts with Uranus in a very positive way. Uranus is the great awakener. He's in Taurus energy, trying to show us where it is that we have to kind of get out of the rut in which we've created for ourselves because of the tried, tested, true, comfortable, familiar type of energy of continuing to do the same old, same old. But of course, we have been downloaded with new wants, needs, and desires, which require us to do different things in order to get a different result. The moon interacting with Uranus in this way, definitely going Going to bring some clarity going to give us a download an aha moment an epiphany on what it is that we actually have power and control over in our physical realms as of right now that we could do to actually align with the greater grander picture that of course we're trying to manifest this is definitely good vibes it feels like we are feeling a little bit more confident a little bit more prepared to do what we have to do in order to actually bring forth these new aspects these new elements in our physical realm Realm. The moon is then going to trine Venus. So Venus is in the final degrees of Aries energy. The moon is in the final degrees of Sag energy. This is fire on fire action. This is a gentle nudge, a graceful change and in transformation into realizing what it is that we need to be doing to create more happiness, more joy, more safety, more security in our physical realms. This has a lot to do with the change of heart that we have had with new wants new needs new desires with new values with new priorities especially valuing our own individual wants needs and desires our own individual path plan and strategy over the ones that we have been trying to percolate on as far as partnerships and teamwork and groups go so this is like an aha moment on what we have to be doing for ourselves the truth that we need to be standing in individually for ourselves the mission the goal the dream the vision that we need to be conjuring up for ourselves and this is definitely going to add an intensity an impulse an urge that we want to take action we want to make moves we want to be vocal with the changes of heart we want to discuss what it is that we want to achieve that we want to pursue from here but it's just not time the moon is then going to get in the boxing ring square off create tension and conflict with neptune neptune is in this place of power in this pisces energy this is the last aspect that the moon and sag is going to make before going void of course the moon interacting with neptune in this way is going to kind of i'm going to say overstimulate us make us hypersensitive, make us very confused on what it is that we want to do, what we want to pursue, what we should be doing at this particular point in time. Because again, we're trying to kind of suppress those urges that the passion, that desire to take action and make moves. We need to think about it. We need to be stabilized in doing so. We need that green light go ahead, which is coming at the very end of the month and into May. And we're not there yet. So this is like an agitation where it is that the, the way forward the path forward still kind of vague still kind of confusing and at this particular point in time the excitement the hopes the wish the dreams that we were conjuring up over the last couple of days of the moon being in sag suddenly they don't seem tangible anymore they don't seem realistic they don't seem achievable that is just that shadow element coming out to play in order for us to kind of transform change restructure our inner realm of perspective of belief a vision of goals of dreams so 3 32 a.m eastern standard time the moon is going to go void of course this is where things are shaky uncertain unstable we have one aspect popping off while the moon is void and that is between the moon being in sag energy making a positive interaction with jupiter jupiter rules over the sag energy jupiter is like the hype girl of the zodiac jupiter is in taurus energy this is us kind of getting a glow up a grow up this is us kind of restoring our hope our faith our wishes again this is us kind of aligning with the goal, the vision, the dream of us creating new options and opportunity for growth, for abundance, for change, for transformation in our physical realm. So this is kind of like a little bit of a pick me up before the moon actually shifts into Capricorn energy, which of course it does at 538 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. About four hours later, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money 
at the final degrees of this Aries energy, making a positive interaction with Neptune, who of course is at the final degrees of Pisces energy in its rulership. So Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, meaning that Neptune is where we kind of receive insights, receive downloads, where we are intuitive and inspired, where we tap into creative force energies. Venus is how we bring it to life. It's the physical form, it's the physical vessel, it's the heart space. And so having these two interact, first of all, we're being downloaded with huge ideas, huge inspiring visions and goals and dreams on what it is that our heart wants us to pursue. And of course, what we have to do in order to initiate that path. Venus being in this Aries energy, she's all fired up. She's bold, she's brave, she's courageous. She's able to go after what it is that she needs to go after, but she's also at the very final degrees of this Aries energy, which makes her very unstable. There's a lot of, I'm going to say restlessness. There's a lot of heart activations. There's a lot of ants in our pants. We want to act upon, you know, the visions, the intuitive insights that we're receiving, but again, just not time for that. We have the moon in Capricorn energy, making a very positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself in this Aquarius energy. So this is definitely going to be intense, but it's intense in our inner realm to get focused and concentrated on what needs to be done in order for the change, for the transformation in our physical realms to actually be able to manifest again. Your, your heart and your head have to be in alignment before you can engage the physical body. And we still have some wrinkles in our plans to iron out and we still have to refine our to-do list and the roles and responsibilities weighing on us right now are kind of heavy. They're kind of weighted and the obligation, the commitment that we have to other people, to other roles and responsibilities kind of getting in the way of what it is that we need to be doing for ourselves. So this is a positive interaction is definitely going to pop off in our mental plane and in our heart space where it is that a major change a major transformation especially in our perspective needs to happen before we're going to be able to actually act upon some of these impulses and bring some of these goals and visions to life the moon in this capricorn energy then going to make a very positive interaction with saturn saturn rules over the capricorn energy and saturn the lord of karma is in pisces energy First of all, this is going to bring the reality check in. Now, lucky for us, this is a positive interaction, which means that the reality check isn't going to be harmful or hurt our feelings or so in our face that we're jolted. It's going to be a subtle, somber, serious approach to, yes, logically and practically, what it is that we have to do to deconstruct, to collapse the old ways of doing things, the old ways of going about getting what it is that we want, our old belief system. And in turn, we're realizing right now by taking a good look at our to-do list that what needs to be done first and foremost is that we need to be building ourselves up in self-esteem, in self-worth, in self-confidence at this particular point in order for us to be, um, I'm going to say, in our power in control, if you will, to take action, to make moves on the aspects in our physical realms that are blocking us from actually bringing something new to life. So although this is a little bit of a reality check, a little bit of a seriousness, somberness type of approach to what it is that we have to do, we are actually building in our determination, in our motivation, in our willpower to do what we have to do in order to get this done. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, and how it is that we express ourselves, who is still acclimating to this forward motion, still trying to piece together all of the situations and circumstances and scenarios that popped off while Mercury was unconscious in his retrograde. Mercury is going to interact with Saturn and lucky for us, this is in a very positive way. So this is almost like we're gaining insight. We're gaining aha moments. We're gaining clarity on what we have to get focused on. If you had listened to the Ascension forecast that I just put out for this week, you would know that Mercury going direct gives us a couple of days to get focused, to get concentrated on what needs to be done before Venus and Mars moves into their respective rulerships, which of course is going to give us a trigger and an activation to take action and make moves. So at this particular point, we are building in our inspiration, in our determination, in our focus, in our concentration on what needs to be done. 
Saturn, yes, is the Lord of Karma, but he's also roles and responsibilities that we have to actually bring forth new structures, new foundations for us to build upon. And so Mercury being in this Aries energy, we're hot to trot. We're ready to jump into something new. We're ready to initiate a new chapter. But doing so without a structure, without a path, without a plan, without a strategy is a waste of time, is a waste of energy. So Saturn's here to kind of pump the brakes, if you will, to make sure that we've thought of everything very carefully, very thoroughly that we are exploring other options, that we're getting focused and concentrated on what needs to be done. The moon in Capricorn is then going to make a awkward interaction with first Uranus, then Jupiter, both of them, of course, very close together in this Taurus energy. The interaction with Uranus is, first of all, going to give us a little bit of insight on options, on opportunities to switch things up, to do things a little bit different. Again, just a reminder that the Capricorn energy likes to stick to what is tried, tested, and true until we are kind of exposed to information, details, options, opportunities that make more sense to us. And this is what Uranus is trying to bring forward is a new way of looking at things, a new way of feeling towards things, a new way of perceiving and understanding things, and therefore a new opportunity to do things differently. The moon interacting with Jupiter, however, is going to illuminate and magnify where it is that we are definitely stepping into a major chapter of growth. Jupiter, of course, being the planet of growth and expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, also in this Taurus energy. So this is Earth on Earth action. We are definitely logical and practical in the way that we are thinking about the opportunities to kind of switch around, restructure, redesign our physical realms to start mirroring back a lot more happiness, a lot more joy, a lot more abundance, a lot more safety and security in our physical realms, in our physical lives. So the moon interacting with Jupiter in this way, it's kind of like magnifying the areas of growth. And we can tell the areas of growth due to the areas that we are frustrated with, that we no longer want to experience, but that we're also fearful and nervous about changing because again sticking to what is tried tested and true at least it's familiar at least it's predictable when trying new things and out in foreign territory you really don't know what to expect but we know at this point if we continue to do what it is that we've always done we're only ever going to get what we've already got we got to bust out try something new create a different result the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon trining beautiful interaction with the sun. And this is again, earth on earth energies. And we love this because again, when the moon and the sun come together in any kind of interaction, it's going to illuminate a new emotional awareness, a new aha moment of our wants, of our needs, of our desires, of what it is that we have to do in order to cut things out, eliminate certain aspects to create the space to build something new in the place of the things that we're no longer in alignment with. Because this is earth energy, we are very rooted in our physical form. We are very attached to our five senses. We are very much leaning into allowing our physical realm to dictate what is possible for us. Now, although we do still need to kind of, you know, align with our intuition, we are in Taurus season, which does have us more connected to the ego, physical sense self than it does our higher self, and intuitive self. However, we are merging the expanded soul space that we just went through, through eclipse season, back into this physical form. And therefore, there is a new illumination, emotionally speaking, where it is that we're thinking about long-term wants, needs, and desires, and what it is in this present moment, we actually have control over to actually align with the long-term goal and vision that we are still trying to kind of piece together, refine, solidify in our third eye, in our mind space. And so this is a beautiful time to kind of feel a little bit more content in our physical form, to be a little bit more content in the present moment, to have the attitude of gratitude for what is currently taking place while still pushing the boundaries of what it is that we could actually do that is different, that we could expand upon in our physical realms to again, create a different, better long-term result. 